Jonathan, what's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday morning. If you're uh, if you're just logging in, text us where you're where you're from in the uh, in the Twitter chat box. We'll give you we'll give you a shout out. Where are you coming from? We're in New York City. It's cold and raining today. I hope you have better weather wherever you are. Anybody typing yet, Chris? Uh, we got some viewers. Looks like we're up to thirty people watching right now. 30 people watching. Awesome. Tell us where you guys are from. Type it into the chat. We'll give you a shout out. There's a little bit of a delay here. So, uh, so as soon as people start typing, uh, we can start giving you guys shout outs. I think we've got a little bit of a delay, but type, type in the box. Tell us, tell us where you're from. Hit that like button. It's Belgium. Belgium, what's up? What's up? Hey, how are you, Yoni? Yoni. Ingrid. Ingrid. Do you want a shout out? Say something to Zach. Let him know. Type a comment. Tell us where you're from. Where are you watching from? Hey, we're up to 50 people now. All right, we got 50 people watching. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Should we just go ahead and get started, Chris? Yeah, we can do it. Canada, Panama. Canada, Panama. What's up? All right. Cool. We can take this thing I'm, I'm sure the weather is better in Panama than it is uh, in New York City this morning. Chris and I walked to work nice and early in the uh, cold rain, uh, but we're pumped to be doing our, our first ever BlockFi Live, Twitter live stream. Thank you all for uh, tuning in. I also want to give a big shout out to uh, Chris Fiore. He's uh, one of the leaders on our marketing team here. He set up this whole thing. In addition to following at the Real BlockFi on Twitter uh, and and at BlockFi Zach, you should also follow at Real Chris Fiore. That's at Real C H R I S F I O R E. The guy is killing it on all of our social media channels and and other marketing for BlockFi. So uh, thank you, Chris. So uh, today we're going to do a few things. So I'm going to walk through uh, a couple of quick things, uh, an introduction on myself. I'm going to touch a little bit on uh, what we've accomplished at BlockFi this year. I'm going to talk a little bit about our roadmap, and then we're just going to jump in and start asking uh, or answering rather uh, questions that you folks submitted uh, on Twitter ahead of time. Chris is also going to be monitoring the chat, and he's going to take questions from the chat and add them to a doc that, uh, that I've got here in front of me. So let us know your questions. Uh, we're going to try and get to as many of them as we, uh, as we possibly can. And thanks again for tuning in. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, just a quick bit of background on myself. Um, I'm, originally from, uh, I'm originally from Texas. I've always worked at venture-backed uh, technology startup companies. I was in the online advertising sector for a little while, spent some time at Google. Uh, and more recently, prior to starting BlockFi, I worked in uh, fintech, specifically the lending side of fintech. I started investing in cryptocurrency in 2014, uh, fell in love with it for, for a number of reasons. Obviously, uh, the performance was one of them. But I also think that uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain payment rails uh, enables uh, a true transformation of financial services and a global distribution of financial services that, uh, that wasn't possible. So we've been around for a little over two years now at BlockFi. We're the only retail focused crypto lending business that has institutional backing and a compliance infrastructure uh, focused on on the US market. Um, we're not going to do it today, but in one of our subsequent live streams, I'm going to grab the phone, grab the phone, walk you all around our office so you can see uh, the 50 or so folks that we have uh, working here in our New York office. We also have a big team in Poland and uh, a rapidly growing team in Argentina. So uh, BlockFi is global, just like all of you folks uh, uh, tuning in here. Um, so just a quick recap on, on 2019 for BlockFi. It was a breakout year for us. So, so in January of 2019, we had one product on our platform. It was a U.S. dollar loan secured by cryptocurrency products. So if you've got Bitcoin or Ether or Litecoin and you don't want to sell it, uh, but you want some liquidity, you can do that via our loan product. And that was the only product that we had in January of this year. 
Uh, fast forward to today, we have three products that are live on our platform. We have the US dollar loan product. You can also earn interest on stable coins now. We launched the BlockFi interest account, which lets you earn 6.2% on your Bitcoin, a little over 4% on your Ether. Uh, and we're going to be adding more assets to that soon, which I'll, which I'll touch on shortly. And then the newest product that we've launched is the ability to uh, buy and sell cryptocurrency, trade it on our platform with no fees. It's super fast, super slick, better prices than what you're going to get on any other retail uh, facing platform. Uh, so check that out as well. And in addition to launching those products, we did a, a revamp of our of our UX. So the interface uh, is looking better than it ever has before. A um, couple of things that we're going to be focused on for 2020. So we're adding USDC and, and Litecoin. I've actually already uh, in, in my account. We're going to be rolling that out publicly the second week of uh, January. So those assets will be uh, available for you very soon. Um, with interest rates that are, you know, the best in the market, similar to what we're already doing for Bitcoin, Ether, and GUSD. We're also going to have uh, fiat on and off ramps and a mobile app coming to you very early in 2020. So on the fiat on and off ramp side, it's going to start with wires. It's going to proceed to ACH in the U.S. market. And then we're going to add uh, on and off ramps for other currencies uh, as soon as we possibly can. Um, the mobile app is going to launch in two versions. Uh, early in Q1, we're going to launch a read-only version. So you can go to the app, you can check your balances, you can uh, probably adjust some of your profile settings, and then later on in Q1 or early Q2, the application is the web. The mobile app is going to have full functionality. So everything you can do on the BlockFi uh, web app, you're going to be able to do in the mobile app as well. So we're really excited about that. The thing I'm personally most excited about for 2020 is that we're going to be launching a Bitcoin rewards credit card. So you're going to be able to spend money like you do on your credit cards if you have one today, uh, except instead of earning airline miles or normal cash back, you're going to get an incredible Bitcoin cash back rate on every transaction that you make with the card. Uh, one of the things that, that we haven't talked about yet, uh, but we're going to start talking about is your credit score. Uh, this is going to be a, a prime card. You're going to need to have a credit score probably uh, at 680 or above to get approved for it. So if you don't know what your credit score is uh, or if it's a little bit below that range, definitely figure that out. Credit Karma is a great resource where you can check your credit score for free. Um, check that out and try and get your credit score over 680 uh, so that you can get the Bitcoin rewards credit card. In addition to this card being attractive to folks that already love Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, uh, like all of us here, we think it's going to be a fantastic opportunity for uh, the crypto curious to uh, get their hands on some Bitcoin uh, in a really easy and, and familiar way. And we're going to do a ton of uh, exciting and fun marketing uh, around that product uh, starting in, in Q2 of next year. So that's my quick intro. I'm going to jump right into your questions. Again, if you have questions, go into uh, the chat send them to Chris and we're just going to start, we're just going to start working through them. So the first question, uh, when is the app coming? Uh, the app is on the 2020 roadmap. We should have the first version out in Q1 and then the second version out uh, in Q2. Um, I've already seen some demos of it. Uh, I think Android will probably come out a little bit quicker than iOS, but it looks great. We're really excited about it. So the mobile app will be coming out first version in Q1, second version in, uh, in Q2. Next question. I'm concerned about security. I had $30,000 stolen off Coinbase after a SIM swap attack at T-Mobile. How can you guarantee that my funds won't be stolen off of BlockFi? Um, so there's a lot of things uh, that we do in terms of uh, security here. And I'm really happy to say that uh, to our knowledge, and, and I, I think we would, we would know if this has happened, no one has ever uh, lost funds off of uh, BlockFi as a result of a hack. So some of the things that, that we have in place already are if you go to the profile settings section of your BlockFi account, you have the ability to turn on 2FA. Uh, everybody should do that. You should turn on 2FA, uh, use Google Authenticator, uh, secure your account. Another thing that we have is whitelisted withdrawal addresses. So if you have another cryptocurrency wallet, um, you can take a deposit address from that wallet. You can save it in your BlockFi account. You can turn on the whitelisting feature 
And what that whitelisting feature does is it puts a 72 hour hold on any withdrawal that isn't going to a whitelisted withdrawal address. Um, the other thing that we do today as an extra security measure is we have a delay on all withdrawals of 24 hours. So uh, if you submit a withdrawal from BlockFi, they're not instantly processed. There's a little bit of a hold there. We send you an email letting you know that uh, a withdrawal has been initiated. And if it wasn't you that initiated it, please contact our support team. Uh, we, we've, we've stopped numerous uh, you know, uh, hackers from getting our customer funds as a result of that delay. Um, and while it's not, it's not ideal to uh, have a bit of a delay there, we decided to prioritize security of customer funds over speed, at least for now when it comes to the withdrawal process. So know that we're doing uh, all of those things uh, and more in terms of our general information security procedures internally and in the, in the technology infrastructure that we have uh, to keep your money safe when it's in our custody. Last thing on this, uh, on this point, um, all of the funds, while they're held at BlockFi, are custodied at Gemini. Gemini is a trust company regulated by the New York Department of Financial Services. They were the first custodian in the cryptocurrency space to get insurance on their hot wallets. They've also gone through SOC 2 Type 1 audits, which is a uh, bank-level audit around your operational and information security practices. And they were the first custodian to do that. And Gemini has a perfect track record of keeping not only BlockFi client funds safe, but also all of the funds uh, on their platform. So we work with a very reputable uh, custodian to uh, keep the assets safe. All right, next question. How do you deal with Bitcoin volatility? Won't you be in debt if Bitcoin prices rise too much? Um, so, so we could spend a whole, you know, a, a, an entire live stream talking about our risk management infrastructure, uh, our treasury management infrastructure, and how all of those things work. But I'll try to answer this question uh, concisely, and I think there's a few more along this same vein later down in the dock. Um, so we have a proprietary in-house built risk management system that's designed specifically for the cryptocurrency market. What that risk management system does is it manages all of our lending positions, U.S. dollar lending secured by cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency lending secured by U.S. dollars. And it's a fully automated system that issues uh, notifications, margin calls, and also places trades in the scenario that we need to. Um, that risk management system and BlockFi in general has a perfect track record. It's been live since January of 2018. That's when we made our first loan. We've never lost a penny in any of the lending activities that we do, and our portfolio performance uh, has been perfect. Um, on the second part of this question, won't you be in debt if Bitcoin price rises too much? Uh, in addition to um, being really smart about the risk management when we're lending Bitcoin, uh, we're fundamentally Bitcoin bulls. So uh, despite the fact that we're making money by uh, lending Bitcoin and that's creating the interest that we're paying to depositors, we also own Bitcoin uh, on our corporate balance sheet at BlockFi, partially because we're bulls, partially as a hedge against rapid price rises, which uh, if you just look at uh, the performance of Bitcoin, um, you can see that those happen uh, pretty frequently. So we're doing all of those things. Next question, when SegWit? Um, we, so today we use Gemini's uh, wallet infrastructure. So uh, I actually didn't have a chance to ask the folks there when they plan on implementing SegWit. Um, but as soon as it's available on Gemini, it will also be available uh, on BlockFi. Next question, will it eventually be possible to buy, sell with U.S. dollars? Uh, yes, absolutely. This is uh, one of the number one things that we're getting asked about. Um, this functionality is going to come out starting early next year. You may have seen the announcement around us uh, starting to receive money transmission licenses. We announced that we got our license in uh, Washington last week. We also got our license uh, in Kansas uh, just yesterday. So, We'll be getting more licenses and you'll have the ability uh, in, in Q1 to wire money to BlockFi and in Q2 to ACH money to BlockFi uh, if you're in the U.S. So uh, you're going to have full fiat on and off ramp functionality coming very soon next year on our platform. Next question. Will you add YubiKey as a 2FA option, please? Uh, we can look into this. It's not on our roadmap, uh, but we appreciate the suggestion. 
we'll absolutely look into adding YubiKey in addition to uh, Google Authenticator 2FA, which uh, is what we have now. Next question, will you take direct AUD deposit, Australian dollars? Um, yes, uh, we will. Uh, this is uh, support for other currencies outside the U.S. dollar in terms of uh, on and off ramp from uh, bank accounts as something that will support with wires very early next year. Um, and uh, we'll support the currency natively on our platform probably sometime in the back half of next year. So we want to have support for euro, yen, uh, AUD, um, and other uh, currencies uh, in, in the top 10 uh, by the end of 2020. Next question, are you prepared for the 2019 proof of keys? Uh, so this will be our, our, our second proof of keys uh, event at BlockFi. We're absolutely prepared for it. Keep in mind, if you want to participate in this event, that withdrawals on our platform take one to two business days. So uh, the time to put in a withdrawal, if you want to uh, have your keys in your hand uh, on January 3rd, is probably the end of December. Um, definitely no later than January 1st, but we're absolutely ready. We're set up for it, uh, and it's going to go smoothly. Uh, next question. Do you plan to reduce the current amount of Bitcoin that qualifies for 6% as the price of Bitcoin goes up and up? Um, so most recently, we, we adjusted the tier uh, for earning 6% from 5 Bitcoin up to 10 Bitcoin. Uh, so this is trending uh, in the right direction right now. Um, the big driver of, of what rates we can pay to depositors is less the price of Bitcoin and more the borrowing demand that we see from institutions, which is uh, primarily driven by liquidity in the cryptocurrency eco ecosystem and volatility of the assets, not by price. Um, so this really depends on market structure. Uh, we said when we came out with the 6.2% interest rate on Bitcoin uh, that we planned on keeping it in place for a long time. And I think it's important to note that that base rate of 6.2% on Bitcoin has not changed since we launched the interest account uh, in February of this year. Next question, how realistic is it to expect FDIC insurance on BlockFi? I would gladly exchange a few interest rate points for an insurance on my holdings. Um, so we're actively looking into uh, insurance options for uh, the lending activity. So as of right now, there are a couple of pieces of insurance that already exist. So at the corporate level at BlockFi, we have uh, insurance uh, against um, uh, a couple of different things at, at, the, uh, at the corporate level. Uh, so DNO, cybersecurity, there's a, there's a you know, handful of pieces of insurance that we have for, uh, for BlockFi. We also have insurance on funds custodied at Gemini via their insurance uh, policies that they have on their platform. The piece that's missing currently is insurance on specifically the lending activity related to losses. So the way that this will play out uh, over time is first, we'll, we'll likely do something like the BitMEX and, Dara, and Darabit uh, insurance pools. We'll make that information publicly available. Um, and then later, depending on you know, market growth, uh, you might see some type of uh, consortium get built with uh, large cryptocurrency market participants to ensure activity of er across various platforms. And then maybe one day down the road, the holy grail would be FDIC insurance, similar to what you have in banks. Um, so to answer the question uh, directly, it is probably not realistic to expect FDIC insurance uh, on the cryptocurrency holdings in BlockFi accounts. On the fiat holdings, sure, uh, that, that'll, that'll come. But on the cryptocurrency holdings, it's probably not a realistic thing to expect in 2020, although there, although there are other types of insurance and protection that, uh, that we are planning to add, but we don't have a definitive timeline for uh, right at this moment. Um, okay, will new cryptocurrencies be added? Um, yes, new cryptocurrencies will be added. The first ones that are coming are USDC and Litecoin in early January. Uh, Throughout next year, we're, we're probably going to add somewhere between five and 10 additional assets to the platform. That will be a combination of stable coins and cryptocurrencies. Uh, so we'll be you know, reaching out to you and, and our clients uh, to help us gather information and prioritize what we should add. 
uh, but it's one of the key themes for next year in addition to launching new products is adding support for more currencies. So yes, absolutely. Um, when NYC, seriously, <laughs> uh, great question. Um, as, as I'm sure a lot of you know, New York has uh, this piece of regulation called the bit license. Uh, it's something that we are you know, actively monitoring and uh, considering uh, submitting an application for um, the process uh, is pretty laborious. Um, it's, it's the you know, most difficult uh, process and most challenging license uh, to get. So I'm sure we will have it at some point. Uh, but we don't have a date and uh, it's highly unlikely that uh, the interest account specifically uh, is available in New York in the first half of next year. Um, you are able to access the loan side of the platform in New York. So if you want to borrow dollars secured by your cryptocurrency holdings, that's already available to New York residents. And we're working hard to make earning interest in trading and the other functionalities available in New York as soon as we possibly can. Next question, um, your competitors offer a multi-sig option. When will BlockFi implement this for BlockFi interest account clients? Um, it's, uh, it, it's unlikely that we'll ever offer uh, a multi-sig option for the interest account. And the reason is that um, the way that we're generating the yield that we're paying to depositors is by physically moving cryptocurrency and lending it to institutional borrowers. Uh, as a result, um, it's not possible to, you know, create a multi-sig where your cryptocurrency stays segregated and sitting in a single address with, uh, you know, multi-sig functionality on it. Um, so it's not something that's on our immediate roadmap. Uh, we think that multi-sig is great. We're excited about uh, some of the other platforms that can offer that uh, for, for their products, but it's unlikely that it's something that uh, is going to be viable for the products that we have at BlockFi and, and the way we've designed our system. Next question. Uh, are you hiring? Uh, yes, we are hiring a lot. We're, uh, you know, this year we grew the team from 10 people in January to a little over 65 people. Now we're hiring across all of the functions of the organization, engineering, marketing, client service, institutional services, finance. Um, so if you go to our website, uh, I think at the bottom, there's a link to the, uh, to the jobs page. Definitely click on that, check out the open positions, and we'd love to uh, hear from you uh, if you're interested in, uh, in joining the team. Okay, next question. Are you going to be at any conferences in 2020? Which ones? Uh, yes, we're going to attend quite a few more conferences next year than, than we did this year, uh, including conferences uh, outside the U.S. Um, I'm actually going to pull up uh, an email real quick. I saw a list recently. Uh, okay. Well, you know what we'll do? We'll actually tweet it out. At my, it's not going to be super easy to pull it up on email. Some of the ones that are notable is I know we're going to be going to uh, Token 2049 in Hong Kong. So we'll be making our first trip uh, out to Hong Kong as a team. We'll be going to uh, an event in London. I think it might be uh, DAS London uh, sometime in February. Uh, we'll be attending uh, Consensus and all the associated events uh, for New York Blockchain Week. Um, we'll also be going to uh, Consensus Invest. Uh, we'll be going to Ethereal and speaking there. Um, and we'll, we'll put out an event calendar on our, on our webpage soon. Uh, but we'll be going to uh, a lot more events in, in 2020 than we did in 2019. Okay, next question. Any plans to support a gold product like Pax Gold? Um, yes, we don't have a specific date uh, set for that, but uh, Pax Gold is on the short list for currencies after USDC and Litecoin uh, to be added to the platform. And, and we're, um, in general, really excited about that uh, concept of tokenizing things uh, like gold and, and bringing them into uh, the blockchain ecosystem and, and moving them around on blockchain payment rails. Uh, so we'll be adding that uh, probably, if I had to estimate right now, I'd say end of Q1 or, or early Q2, we'll be adding support for uh, Pax Gold across our product suite. Next question, what excites you most about crypto in the next few years? Um, so I'm excited about a ton of stuff. Uh, 
I think there's two key themes that I'm excited about right now. So one is um, the continued development uh, at BlockFi and, and with other places uh, of you know, easy on-ramp solutions uh, in developed markets. So um, easy on-ramp solutions is a combination of being able to buy and sell cryptocurrency on existing platforms. So in the U.S., folks like Square, Robinhood, uh, SoFi, um, and I'm sure we'll see things from uh, firms like TD Ameritrade or E-Trade or others uh, this year in places like Japan. Uh, it's companies like Rakuten in places like in Europe. It's companies like Revolut uh, and probably folks like N26 and others over time will be adding support for cryptocurrency into their ecosystem. The other thing that I'm excited about in terms of on ramps, aside from established companies adding crypto support to the platform, is putting cryptocurrency into structures that are familiar to people and easy on ramps for folks uh, aside from just buying it. So we're really excited about launching the uh, Bitcoin rewards credit card next year. I think what folks like Lolly and pay are doing uh, is really exciting and also fold. Um, I think that's really exciting. Uh, the more ways we can create for people to, you know, uh, dip their toe into the sector, acquire Bitcoin without having to spend their own money to buy it for the first time, and also integrating with uh, more traditional platforms, uh, the better. So that's the first theme I'm excited about. Second theme I'm excited about is uh, adoption and emerging in frontier markets. Um, so if you look at charts of, uh, you know, like local Bitcoin's activity, for example, um, adoption and trading of cryptocurrency in emerging markets generally is a a pretty steady line up and to the right. Um, and if there's a economy that has a currency crisis or a banking crisis, activity will spike up. Um, whereas in developed markets uh, like US, Europe, Japan, uh, you see that activity correlates pretty strongly with price. When the price is going upwards or hitting all time highs, everyone's really excited. When it's going down, volatility slows down. So um, I'm really excited about emerging and frontier market adoption. I was actually just down in Montevideo, Uruguay for uh, La BitConf, uh, and it was awesome to be down there, learn a lot about what's happening uh, in LATAM. Um, and at BlockFi, we're going to uh, start focusing on a couple of markets outside the U.S. next year. So two things I'm most excited about, um, continued adoption and develop markets via uh, integration of buying and selling cryptocurrencies onto existing platforms and being able to earn cryptocurrency without buying it through things like the BlockFi credit card, uh, Lolly, Pay, FoldApp, et cetera. The second theme is uh, adoption and developed uh, in emerging markets, uh, in developing in emerging markets. So uh, we've got our run. This, this like flew by. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I hope that everybody enjoyed it. Um, we're going to try and do these a lot more frequently. Uh, and if your question didn't get answered today, um, you should always feel free to contact our support team. You, there's a number on our website that you can call and you can talk to really smart people here uh, during U.S. business hours. Um, I'm available on Twitter. Chris is available on Twitter. We're available via email, support at BlockFi.com. And we're going to do another one of these very soon. So if you want to hear me answer your question, uh, stay tuned for that next uh, BlockFi live event um, and, and we'll get it in there. So thank you everybody for joining. Have a great rest of your day.